Nestling in the Ardennes forest lies one of the world's greatest circuits, Spa. It's home to Formula One's Belgian Grand Prix. And this year, the glamorous, passionate, high-tech world welcomes an unlikely newcomer, lorry mechanic and motorcycle racer, Guy Martin. When it comes to motorsport, the pinnacle of it is Formula One. So, um, yeah, so that's what you said. You fancy a bit. You fancy a bit. You fancy a bit. I says, bloody right, I do. That is the measure of mechanics. If you can get to Formula One, you've done all right. So, yeah, can I make it as a Formula One mechanic? <laughs> I don't know. The ultimate goal? To join the mechanics' most coveted ranks, the pit stop crew. Bang on. He'll live, <laughs> travel, eat and train with the best of the best. Williams Martini Racing can change all four tyres in a record 1.92 seconds. Fried my brain. Fried my brain. You'll need to impress some of the sport's most famous faces. If you do a good job, you're welcome. Don't screw it up. No, <laughs> yeah, he's very good, he's out. Learn intricate split-second choreography. No, 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 sorry. And process complex information under intense pressure. That tire's at 100 degrees. 20 seconds off. For a chance of becoming the first person outside the sport to ever carry out a pit stop during a race. If we don't, yeah, it'll be a short programme. I'm not good at many things, but I'm good at growing air, and I'm a good mechanic. Anyone else for a break? Am I good enough to work in Formula One? I don't know. We will see. We will see. Guy's mission begins at the Williams factory in Grove, Oxfordshire. The company exists purely to race and was founded by a Formula One legend, Sir Frank Williams. How are you, Frank? I've seen you before. How's it going? You okay? These days, the former mechanic is usually found near the front door, keeping an eye on who's visiting. You've done some winning. Well, quite a bit. It's never enough, though, is it? No, nah, it's never you, enough. You, That's you, the problem, man. I never sell. <laughs> never sell. Yeah. Yeah. As much as Guy would like to get his hands on an F1 car straight away, his first exposure to this high-speed sport is with a meeting. I'm not a meetings person racing, now. With the senior team in charge of pit stops. Should we look at some data? Yeah. I was presented with graphs and pie charts and video recordings of good pit stops, video recordings of bad pit stops. And more pie charts and more graphs. The meeting is led by one of F1's most respected figures, sporting manager Steve Nielsen. So Mark can overwrite that if he needs to. This is very unusual, and in my time, and I've done this for many years, I've never had somebody from outside come and be part of the pit crew. This is an extraordinary thing, and it's not something we do lightly, and the limits and the standards that we're looking for are real and have to be met, because there's too much at stake. Yeah, that's real time, yeah. <laughs> there are 600 people working here only on Formula One. There's the investment of all our sponsors, the effort of all these people. We're not going to risk a poor pit stop if we're not absolutely confident that it's going to go well. OK, standby crew, box 10 seconds. In a Grand Prix that can last up to two hours, a two-second pit stop may seem insignificant. But in fact, it provides a vital opportunity to pass a competitor. Very often, that's when you overtake other cars. You really want it to be two and a half or less. If that was to become four seconds, you could easily lose track position for that. Those fast pit stops require the precise choreography of 22 pit crew performing 34 different actions. The air gun is put on the single wheel nut before the car even stops and is undone in half a second. It should take just under a second to swap wheels. The gunman uses feel alone to know when to stop tightening the nut back up. A tenth of a second later, and the car is lowered off its jacks. The two-second process.
takes longer to say than do. Get the wheel and get the wheel out. Get the knot on. Jack up, jack up. So what are the secrets of a perfect pit stop? Firstly, the driver must stop on target. Here, he's just 10 centimeters long, putting the crew in a suboptimal position. Like Olympic weightlifters, the wheel off men must move their feet to a specific position close to the tires, ensuring they use their stronger lower body muscles to remove the wheel. Two men brace the car by hand, making it easier to slot the new tires on. There's even time to clean the rear wing's leading edge. The finishing touch, an articulated front jack which is faster to remove. The whole process is one of the wonders of modern sporting teamwork. Psychology comes into it as well. Dealing with the pressure. Dealing with the pressure. Those 22 guys have all the company's investment in their hands for a couple of seconds. You only need one thing to go wrong and it makes the whole crew look slow. Yes. Some guys cope with that better than others. No, I should be all right with that sort of thing. That's happened, right, that's happened, right. We'll be the judge of that. Yeah, yeah, we will. Yeah, there's, not, said, there's no way to hide, is there? There's no way to hide. Hey, it's all right. Yeah. The proof of the pudding will be in the eating, will it not? Is that what they're saying? Before any mechanic is put onto the pit crew, they must prove they have an essential quality, fitness. Fast pit stops are born in the factory's own gym. We've got row 300, scat push-ups, scat pull-ups, rotational planks, and then wall squats. Yeah, I don't know what any of those things are. This season, the crew have ramped up their training. Rule changes have made Formula One tires 25% larger, so rear wheels now weigh around 17 kilograms. It's affected 12 of the 34 actions involved in a pit stop. The tyre's a little bit bigger, you're dealing with more momentum, you're moving a slightly bigger mass in a still awkward position. The kind of force vectors are going all over the place. You can cause yourself injuries trying to get that tyre off as quickly as possible. Last year, Williams had the fastest pit stop in 15 out of 20 races, thanks in part to the mechanics training like athletes. We've got that, that culture going on now. It's kind of shifted away from Everyone goes out and goes to the pub to actually we've got people who want to train. How often do you do this? Uh, we do it we do it once when we get to the track and then when we're back in the factory here, we'll do one session per week. Ben Howard is in charge of former championship runner-up Felipe Massa's car. Where are you from? Rochdale. Yeah. yeah. I get a lot of grief for that. <laughs> <laughs> you in? Yeah. He'll also be in charge of Guy. I started off in a general just one-man band garage and then gradually built up and eventually made it into F1. It was my dad's fault, he sent my CV off. You've been doing some decorating at home or something. <laughs> Guy is fit, but a series of motorcycle racing accidents mean his flexibility isn't up to F1 standards. And what's this meant to do? So you're learning to recruit your core in different planes. So you're not just using your prime abdominals at the front, you're rotating around and getting into your obliques as well. Yeah. OK? <laughs> and then middle to the back. Mobility is such a crucial factor in executing a two-second pit stop that these mechanics consider yoga mats as important as spanners. A bit of cracking going on. <laughs> Guy has a lot to overcome if he's to fit in with the team during a race. No, I don't know much about gyms, mate. Much at all. I'm not, I've, I've never been in a gym. <laughs> the next stage of Guy's training will be with Williams' secret weapon. In Formula One, competitive advantage is fiercely guarded, and the team do not want to reveal the methods they use for teaching pit stop technique. Hey -oh. Although Guy's microphone is left recording. You want to come like that and then like that. He's sworn to secrecy about what happens behind closed doors. Are you left or right handed? Or you can be either or. Don't matter. What, what happened in there? Um, practiced um, pit stops. Let's just do a couple nice and slow so you can just get used to the movement. OK. And then we'll build the speed up. Yeah? OK. Not saying any more, James. Not saying any more. 
Don't worry, worry about, about, don't worry about whacking me. Not is that right? Not a problem. If you're catching me, then we'll go in quick. Right. I mean, is it a machine? Is it a car in there? What is it? Sorry, sorry. So, crossed up then. You may have the braking strain of a Kit Kat, James. But you won't break me. I'm not saying anything. Just like that. Just like that. From the early days of racing, teams have tried to make pit stops faster. He has a Grand Prix pit stop for Moss. 30 seconds and he's back in the race with a full tank. But why get out the car when you can pass your drink to your pit crew? This constant need to go quicker has led to some famous mistakes. At Malaysia in 2013, Lewis Hamilton stopped at his old McLaren team rather than his new Mercedes one. At the Nürburgring in 2013, Mark Webber was released before his right rear wheel had been tightened, sending the tyre bouncing down pit lane. And at Silverstone in 2012, Kamui Kobayashi misjudged the brakes from 60 miles per hour. Pit crews have to be a special breed. The next stage of Guy's training is to see how well he can integrate with the elite crew, who hold the 1.92 second record. Thank you. Cheers, mate. They're the same gloves that you'll be wearing. In order to preserve the multi-million pound engines, the car is pushed into place for practice sessions like this. Guy will join Ben, who operates the air wrench on the rear left of the car. Just watch your ankles. That's the main thing. I mean, it's going to be a lot of pressure on Guy. You know, a few people were thinking, is he going to be able to do it? Come on, All right. You know, if he's not doing it as he should, he's going to be out. Guy's examination begins with the wheel off roll. Sorry, sorry, sorry. A slow start. Nothing escapes the attention of Chief Mechanic Mark Pattinson and Paul Walker. I get very precious about it. Mark, Chief Mechanic, he's very precious about the pit stops. There's a lot of pride involved. Wheel off is the danger roll. You have to step out in front of the moving car. Well, I need to be stopping the wheel hand, with my hands. hands. You want to be feeling that as the car's coming towards you. So just remember what we, what we struck about. Yes. yes. All the cars coming in, you need to build your confidence because in one step, my foot needs to be just in front of the rear wheel. Don't hit the gun man and get it back and then just crouch down, get out of the way. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. When you see one really synchronised, I always think it's like the time lapse of like a flower closing and then opening again. You have that symphony of everyone moving all together. That was fast. It's beautiful in a way. Yeah, I'm a bit of a geek on it. <laughs> Next guy is asked to try the job of wheel on. It's fairly awkward. You need to get it on without getting in the way of the lad taking it off. Sorry. That's fine. Whilst not trying to hit the gunman. and then not having the wheel too high, not having it too low. Nearly. Holding it there and then feeling when the nut has tightened. Yeah. We'll let you off that one. Guy's slowness in putting the wheel on is in danger of dragging down the whole team. That's the problem with bringing someone in who's not done it. If their timing's slightly off, it might not just be their timing that they're affecting. You've got auditory cues that you're using. Having someone slightly off could actually throw out the whole stop. Finally, Guy tries being the gunman. Mind my fingers. The person who undoes and tightens the wheel nut with the air socket. You need to be at one with the gun. Your knee's in the right place. And then the gun at the right height. As the car's coming in, follow it in. Yes. And while the car's still moving, you need to get the gun on while the car's still moving. Normal human reaction times are two tenths of a second. A good gunman should be half that. Oh, no, no, no. Up Sorry. Again, up up again, up again. Sorry. Bit longer coming Sorry. off. Sorry. Sorry. I'm going 
Gran's got more teeth than that nut. <laughs> yeah. The rule is never to dwell on a slow stop. Just try hard to put it right next time. Hell, he's on fire. The team practice more than 50 times. By the end of the afternoon, with Guy back in the wheel off roll. 1.85. The speed is looking promising. 1.85. Get out of it. Let's go away. Honestly. Enjoyed it, yeah. Really enjoyed it, yeah, yeah. Challenging. 1.74. Yeah, I was really concentrating. I was, you know, I wanted to do as good a job as possible. This practice stop, albeit not under racing conditions, is two tenths faster than the record. But that's still not enough to make the team comfortable. I'd like to see him do a bit more practice before a race weekend, to be completely honest. Sweating? Yeah, yeah, yeah leaking, 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 yeah. Could you imagine if Felipe was in contention for a pole or for a, for a points position, pit stop came in and because of the decision we'd made, the pit stop took four seconds, he ended up behind some slow drivers and that was it. That's, that's not a risk that we're willing to take. Yeah, the pressure will be on, of course it will, but I like being out of my comfort zone. Good job. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> Thank you very much. Guy's training will continue at the Belgian Grand Prix weekend. But before he gets a shot at a Formula One pit stop, with championship points at stake, He'll have to prove he won't let the whole team down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, wheels fell off. Guy Martin's on his way to the Belgian Grand Prix to work as a Formula One mechanic and to find out if he's good enough to take part in a racing pit stop. Is that working now? He's saying we're doing summits in yeah. two and a half kilometers. Guy's travelling in official Williams uniform with number one mechanic, Ben Howard. That's the new Scania that you see, that new shape thing. Hey, well, we might have the air conditioning on, you know. That slows That's... down, on it? So you're looking forward to it, then? Yeah, nervous. nervous. I've been nervous ever since I left you. Really? Yeah. It's all right having the car pushed in and all that, but it's not the real thing, is it? No, when you're stood in pits, like, a bit of a rush. Yeah. Yeah, getting nervous talking about it. Yeah. Oh, I hope. The wife. Hello. Hello, darling. You all right? Have you got nursery today? All right. See you in a bit. Bye. Bye. Oh, you've got it all to come. She's Go on, a, how many a, kids you got? A one. Three-year-old. Yeah. She's right. an absolute belter. Yeah? I love it to bits. Does she go racing with you? She does, yeah. She's in oh, garage lass. with me and everything. Oh, good lass. It's proper. Good lass. Yeah, I've, I have a girl on the way. I just want her to be a better welder than me. That's all I'm bothered about. I'm back in good time. We're going to be well early. Which ain't a bad thing, then. We can have a good look round, then, can't we? Yeah. Is that going to go under, though? Should we have a look? Yeah. Bugger. OK. Ah, oh, well. That's all right, that's all right. It takes 36 hours to build the Formula One circus. The hospitality units are more like hotels. Williams need Europe's biggest telehandler to build their three-storey base, made from 10 lorry trailers. They'll normally serve 100 bottles of Prosecco and 2,000 cups of tea. Although this weekend, it's slightly more. Go, bro. In the garage, Guy gets stuck into the first mechanic's job, helping assemble the car. He's already fitted the engine for me, helping himself to my tools. I might as well just stand in the back. I'm redundant already. 60 team members attend each race. On average, an F1 mechanic earns around £50,000 and is away from home for around 200 days a year. During a race weekend, they'll only leave the garage to eat. If I'd have left school and been given this opportunity, I would be happiest man alive. But despite his enthusiasm, the team is still undecided as to whether Guy will take part in the racing pit stop. The Williams boss in charge of racetrack performance remains sceptical. 
being perfectly honest with you, it's not the most comfortable feeling <laughs> to, to have um, an absolute novice on, on your pit stop. You know, the, the pit stops now are, uh, are so well choreographed and, and we go into such a, an immense level of detail. For a guy to come in and to sync himself up with what is at times, you know, almost flawless choreographed pit stop is, is, is a big ask. You know, there's a series of tests that we've got to put Guy through this weekend, and then we'll kind of see where we're at. And I think Guy, he's quite an honest lad, you know, he's quite an honest chap. He'll know that if he's ready to, to accept that amount of pressure and, 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 and try it on or not. Would you have a go? Would I? <laughs> <laughs> Radio check and uh, good morning, everybody. Williams rehearse pit stops more than any other team. Guy will be mentored in their first practice by Andy McMillan, the person he hopes to replace. Stand by. 20 seconds, Felipe. Go, go, go. I always an over the moon about it, to be honest. <laughs> I'm quite proud of what I do. Getting close, mate. Don't worry about your radio. I hurt my face. I thought I was doing a good job, so I was pretty disappointed at first. Closer, closer, get that leg in. Good car. Guy has got some big, big shoes to fill, really. And he's probably the fittest and most, like, on it guy on the team. He'll outrun most drivers around the circuits, and I'll be filling my face having my dinner while he's doing that, you know. So, 2.0. Just keep doing that. Keep, yeah, yeah. Simplify cool. like that. Just think about what we did now. Just do it like that again, again, again. Every permutation is practiced, even the hands-off rule for a five-second driver penalty. Next stop is Lance, prime tyre, five-second penalty. Right, five seconds. So Just you'll wait. hear the bleeps count down to five. Don't touch it till five, yeah? So don't touch it now. Don't touch. Get in position. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> three, that's me. It's soon apparent that things can go seriously wrong for Guy in his wheel-off role. OK, so what happened there? Just watch it, cos McLaren are listening, so let's take this inside. Our techniques yep. Guy is given his secret instructions out of earshot. In there. Oh, right. Then he's handed more responsibilities, carrying the only spare wheel nut for his corner and bringing out a tyre when rookie driver Lance Stroll stops. It's vital he picks up the right one. On standby, yeah. you stay with your wheel. Yeah? Yes. He might change his mind in the last second. Okay. And so you've got to listen. Next stop is Felipe, option tyre, up two turns front wing. I wouldn't say he's the most agile person I've ever seen. He had that domino effect where he ran into one person, ran into the bit of kit, ran into the next person, which we've all done. I had a trip, someone over coming out. We ran into each other all the time. The next time, he looked like a little linebacker in American football. He dodged everyone, got round, got his wheel out, and that's what, that's what you got to do. We've got a sweat on yet, boys. I'm dabbing, mate. I'm dabbing. <laughs> the most hectic scenario of all is rare, but it's still rehearsed. When one car pits immediately after the other in a so-called stacked stop. It's a stacked stop. It's a stacked stop. So it's a stacked guy, yeah? OK, put the wheel down here. Get ready for the one. next one. That's it, next ready for the next stop. It's going to come straight in. His reactions are unbelievable. <laughs> but, yeah. but I watch him do it, and I can hear myself saying, you know, get on it. Get... And he's already on it. Just one word keeps cropping up. Yeah, OK. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Nice, that was perfect. It was perfect. Yes. Perfect, perfect, mate. Perfect. <laughs> Good. The session ends. Guys, hold there. Thank you very much. With the team consistently recording times under two seconds. That's quite a long session. Right. They were putting you through now. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. yeah. Ain't not rightly so. He's doing a much better job than I thought, and I'm just hoping he slows down a little bit, because at the moment he's making me look a bit stupid, really. That was a lot of combinations. Without a lot of warning, with, with no warning, with no warning. Just had to deal with it. I don't like it. I think that's what pushed me to see if I'm going to break. So. When we're doing 1.7, 1.8 second stops, it's difficult to see where where the ringer is. So no, I think we'll be okay. <laughs> I'm wham, mate. I'm wham. I'm wham. I love it. I love it. <laughs> The most 
most famous pit stop incident of all happened with Jos Verstappen in 1994, three years before his superstar son Max was even born. His Benetton team had modified their rig to speed up refueling, which led to petrol being spilt on a hot exhaust. The fireproof suits worn by driver and crew can withstand 800 degrees for 11 seconds, so Joss and five mechanics escaped with just minor burns. Today, there's no refueling in pit lane, but the modern-day power units with their high-voltage battery packs come with their own hazard, electrocution. Yeah, so obviously, you, you know, say if you come to a problem and there's a, an isolation problem where the, you know, the battery's unsafe and somebody does touch it, there's the hook. Um, obviously, you can't, you're not just going to go and, and grab them off yourself because, you know, you're going to be involved with it as well. You're going to get whatever's happened to them. So we have to use this thing to drag them away. As horrible as it looks, that is the rescue hook. And we haven't used it, and we're not going to use it. So it stays there, that's it. Just look at it. <laughs> the Williams drivers are the highly experienced 36-year-old Brazilian Felipe Massa and the rookie 18-year-old Canadian Lance Stroll. They're in a tight midfield battle in a championship where every point is potentially worth millions. And their first practice begins on Friday morning at 9 a.m. I'll put the blankets, please. The electric blankets pre-warm the tires to 80 degrees to make them stickier and grip the track better. But on the first timed lap of the first session, disaster. Oh, an off has gone massa. Oh my goodness, he's hit the barrier. Just lost the car on the curb. Okay, come here. What did he say? He said he just lost the car on the curb. Right. Felipe getting a little bit over exuberant, a little bit beyond his 16 years and, and trying to do a qualifying lap on lap one in P1. He, he caused untold damage. Lorry mechanic guy is unexpectedly in at the deep end. The race is now on to rebuild a Formula One car and save the weekend. After a crash in first practice by Felipe Massa, Guy Martin has been thrust into the middle of a Formula One mechanic's most pressurized job, a complete car rebuild against the clock. One of the time, I can't get the wheels off, body work. And to confirm, guys, that'll be a chassis change. There are more than 20,000 parts densely packed into a Formula One car. It's like a 650 kilogram watch mechanism, costing three million pounds. Repairing one is not easy. These are the most advanced Formula One cars that have ever existed. The systems in there are unreal. So you can imagine that with every single operation that the mechanics do, there's a lot of pressure to not make a mistake. We rely on their skill, their discipline, their attentiveness to doing a perfect job. But I think what they do is pretty spectacular and pretty special. It's fantastic that guys over here, you know, seeing the standard of mechanicing, you know, he's, he's on it. No matter whether it's motorbike, truck car, pushbike, it is nuts and bolts. It's just very intricate and very compact and, yeah, beautiful. The rebuild continues while Lance Stroll sets off for the second practice session. <laughs> Working in almost total silence, the team have taken just over two hours to repair the car. But while they're making the finishing touches, rain clouds mean they must switch from being mechanics to pit crew. Normal road tyres last more than 10,000 miles, but Formula One tyres can last less than 100. Timing the change to a different compound or treaded pattern to maintain grip is often the art of F1. Guys, can you stand by for a live stop there, Lance, please? 
It's time for Guy to step out in front of a driven car for the first ever time. Lance Stroll is on his way for wet tyres. We had an unexpected pit stop because the weather changed. We were called with 20 seconds to get kit on and go. So it was a bit of a scramble. He handled that well. As we got out there, I noticed not only did he get the wheel out, even though it wasn't ready, but he didn't have his gloves on. And he managed to get one glove on, but the hand that pushes the wheel but gets hot, he just went straight for it. That tire's like 100 degrees. I thought he would look at me and say, do this one, but he just did it. So he didn't have his glove on? Yeah. I was impressed. <laughs> You wouldn't know there was somebody brand new in there. Nice one, Jake. That's That's your hand. Oh. Yeah. Cool, yeah. Hot. Yeah. You only have one glove on. You only have one glove. Yeah. yeah. They're hot, aren't they? That was a bit heavy, huh? <laughs> the team now know that no matter how hard it gets, Guy won't let them down. He goes straight back to work. Sorry, I didn't get the caliber. <laughs> He's a good worker. I mean, is. If, if this was an apprenticeship, we, we could give him a job next week, definitely. All right, job's happening then, boy. Yes, fill it full of coal, send it. The next day is qualifying. It goes badly. Lance Stroll will start 15th, and Felipe Massa, 16th out of 20. Terrible. <laughs> I could swear. Yeah, it's awful. The crooks of his is we need a quicker car. Pit stop practice goes much better. Laser markers help stop the cars on the right spot. 20 seconds done. But a fast time still depends on 22 people timing their movements correctly. We're getting there. His technique's great. There's just a little bit of fluidity that he needs to get just to make sure there's no mishaps, you know, if he's doing it during the race. It's a big if. The decision about Guy taking part in the racing pit stops involves the senior staff and the drivers, Felipe Massa and Lance Stroll. Do you mind if I ever go at your pit stop? If you do a good job, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> right. Go for it. Yeah. Go for it. Right. But, but don't screw it up. <laughs> no, 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 don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't worry. Don't no, worry. it's good. I trust you. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Guys. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Cheers, mate. The final verdict about whether Guy has made the grade will be delivered by the boss. This isn't something that we're taking lightly. I need to be 100% convinced that you're the right man for the job. Well, we'll give it 100%. I will do what I'm told, when I'm told, and then just do it to the best of my ability. Have you been going through it in your brain when you're going yes. to sleep at night? What you worry about, like, like, have, going I, through. have I, don't worry. All right. You feel ready to do a stack stop yes. if that's came yeah, up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. All under Good. control. How are you with nerves? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm all right with the pressure. Um, I've got to the stage now where it's... I'm sort of going into autopilot. And I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to get yeah. nervous. I don't want to be panicking. I'm nearly at that stage now. I'm pleased to say that the team has passed you into the pit stop crew for the weekend on Sunday, so you will be doing the pit stops. Thank you very much. I won't let you down. Welcome. Please don't. I promise. <laughs> right, I'll best get back to him. Thank you. Do I think he'll be all right? I, think, I actually think he'll do a really good job. Touch some wood. I'm not going to sleep tonight. Honest. Oh, no, I'm not joking. Sunday, the day World Championship points and prize money are at stake. After qualifying, no work is allowed on the cars. But outside the garage, the iconic spa circuit is coming alive. Nearly 50 broadcasters start transmitting around the world. A record crowd of 80,000 creates an electric atmosphere. There's nothing like race day. 
Race conditions are another story. We sometimes put uh, heartbeat monitors on, and then it gets to the pit stop and it goes up to something like mental, like 160. <laughs> and then you kind of breathe afterwards that the pit stop's going all right. Stand by, 20 seconds last, prime time. Down one turn. There's time for one last practice. Go, car. And while it appears slick to onlookers, 2.1. Trained observers like Rob Smedley can see all is not well with Guy. He was doing a good impression of a scarecrow with his with his eyes out on stalks. Time for a pep talk. I can see you're a tiny bit nervous because you're trying to get your foot in with Ben, aren't you? Yeah. You know what I mean? The main thing is you just do what you practice. You don't do anything different now. Because that's it now, we've practiced it. Log that. We're going to do it in two hours' time. You don't have to do anything different. You don't have to nothing to be nervous about. You'll be ready. All right. Cheers, boss. All right. As the team prepares to race, news leaks out that Guy will become the first ever outsider to take part in a Formula One pit stop. I'm really impressed by that. Because obviously, Williams are the kings of the pit stop in terms of consistently being fastest. So Guy's got a bit of pressure on him there. He doesn't have to be good, but we know how good he is on the spanners. He's an exceptional individual. He has the ability to look at one situation and that becomes the center of his world and and then when he's not doing that you know he's focused on the dog or he's focused on fettling in the shed or whatever he, he happens to be doing it's quite an intimidating thing is he actually doing it during the race yes he is yeah. oh my god all right okay well good luck <laughs> guy martin is about to experience the belgian grand prix as a member of the williams pit crew First corner crashes are common, and an immediate pit stop for repairs could be necessary. So the rush is on to get ready before the start. A specific seat is allocated for each team member to make sure they run out in the right order. Cheers, Mike. Uh, Helmet, check, gloves, check. Yes. No. Yes. yes. Tissue? Yes. No. Thanks for your time. Cheers. Okay. Second. You're okay. No worries. You're all cool. <laughs> Thank you. And five. Lights out. Away we go. The engineers study 1,500 channels of data transmitted from each car, while the mechanics concentrate on the big screens. They could be called into action at any moment. OK, guys, lap five, radio check, hands up. Great. 17 minutes into the race, the team goes to Amber Alert. And guys, stand by, please, stand by. Guy prepares to unplug the blanket around the softer option tyre on the top rack. After more than 100 practice pit stops, where nothing has gone wrong, he's now poised to do it for real. After an agonizing two and a half minutes. Guys, you can stand down now. Thank you. The engineers decide not to stop Lance Stroll after all. But 35 seconds later, it all changes. Stand by Lance, stand by Lance. And then at the last minute, as a tactical response to their rivals, the Williams strategists decide to use the harder prime tires kept on the bottom rack. Okay, 20 seconds, Lance. The tyre carriers still aren't in position by the time the car arrives. Training, Guy was told anything longer than 2.5 seconds will be bad. Nice work, mate. This stop took 4.5 seconds. Well, for that. Sorry, mate. Don't worry about it. 
did a good job. We might have lost a couple of seconds, but it's better than having the wrong set on. Okay, okay. So, good stuff other than that. <laughs> There's little time to recover. Stand by, Felipe. Stand by, Felipe. This will be a prime tyre this time. Two and a half minutes later, it's time to pit Felipe Massa's car. Hey, Felipe, box this lap, box this lap. time it was a 2.5 second stop even though Massa parked slightly past the optimal mark well done man cheers mate but that second one was okay I felt okay there cheers go thanks mate two and a half seconds perfect okay, okay. <laughs> pressure's on eh fuck uh, you there mate is that good or half he's dirty <laughs> <laughs> he stopped a little bit long but yeah that was good happy with that out on track, Lewis Hamilton is defending his lead from Sebastian Vettel, and both the Williams cars are making up places. With the Palmer. At this stage, the strategists think one pit stop per car will be sufficient, and so at 2:30 p.m., lunch is served. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Them two are going to take each other out. Have you ever raced round there? Yeah, best track I've ever ridden. Is it really? Yeah, it's brilliant. Then the track scenario drastically changes when the two Force India cars collide. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I told you. So one lost his front wing and one got a puncture. I knew that was going to happen. That incident breaks out the safety car, slowing the field down while debris is cleared away. Just stand by, guys. Stand by. Please. With everyone now travelling more slowly, the team can stop for fresh ultra soft tyres with little penalty. And so, 57 minutes into the race, the strategy changes once again. Box, we're going to box this lap. Both cars will now pit one after the other in the most pressurised scenario of all. Backstop, backstop. Matters lead car. Both tyres. Start the second car. 20 seconds, lead pay. 20 seconds, lead pay. This is backstop, this is backstop. Who's fast? Massa! Massa! It's as hectic as pit stops get. Steady away, boy. Next one, boy. 2.6 seconds. The fastest of any team in this round of pit stops. 3.1 seconds. That gun slow. Yeah, the nuts were really tight. Generally on the second one, they get a bit tight. The stack stop has been executed correctly, and both cars return to the track without losing any places. Really good. That's hard to do well, and he did it really well. Listen to the radio, make sure you've got the right tyre, get it out there, he did it all perfectly. So he handled that really well. Lance Stroll is up to 11th. Felipe Massa has made up more places than any other driver and is now in the points in eighth. The Williams mechanics know it's been a good racing day. <laughs> and with just a couple of laps left, the pressure eases. <laughs> Test of your own, Benny, sir. <laughs> it's victory for Mercedes. Hamilton wins the Belgian Grand Prix in style. But there's still a feeling of satisfaction in the Williams garage. Thank you, boys. Great day today. Thank you. Well done, mate. Thank Good you. Job. Well done, mate. Thank you. Good job, mate. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Thank you very much. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Yes, Cocker. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, I did, mate. Thank you. Thanks very much. The lad did well. You know, I was happy. I was watching him. Well, the first one, I was uh, slightly puckered up, but. Uh, <laughs> Then the rest of the stops, they went all right. We'll have some of that, boy. We'll take that away. Thanks, mate. Nice job, mate. Thank you. Nice job, mate. Cheers, bye. Nice job. There we go. Eight, that'll do, won't it? We got eight. Nice work, mate. Nice work. Happy with that. I did genuinely think, yeah, it's been all right for a bit of TV, but come the 11th hour, they'll on your bike, dickhead, we'll get you. We'll get Andy in to do his job as he should, should have been doing. Really for your help. Really, Thank really you for your help. Well, they didn't they let me do it. They've been letting me screw away at the car. And, yeah. yeah, it's been, been bloody amazing, yeah.
That was not an easy race, but yeah. wise you did well. Cheers, lads. Thank you. Right, I'll go and find the loop. I'll go find the loop. I had a little panic because I got out there quite soon, obviously, because I don't have to bring the wheels. And I'm looking, where is he? When I looked around, the other three guys were there, so it's like, yeah, no problem. And then they all came out at the same time, so it's like, please don't, please don't mess up. But nah, he did good, he did good. I think it was absolutely brilliant. It was an experiment to see if we could get a fit young man not only to take part in a Formula One pit stop, but to integrate himself and become one of the boys. And to be honest with you, it's one of the things that I'm, I'm more impressed and more pleased with, you know what I mean? He's just a, he's a smashing lad and he's just come and, and got on with a job and, you know, become our mate in the process. An amazing sport. From the outside, looking in, them boys are all swanning about. No, 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 no. When you're in the thick of it, I've been in the thick of it. It's bloody hard work, I'll tell you. I've got to go back, yeah, let me get cracking. Come on. Right, I'll see you later. You hang in the back, I need to get out of the After the race, the teams start work all over again. Packing up takes six hours. The whole paddock has to drive to Italy, ready for next weekend's Grand Prix. Hey, honestly, boy, hell of an experience. Thank you, mate. Hell of an experience. We needed it, didn't we, really? Good job <laughs> you turned up. <laughs> Guy's final responsibility is to sign a confidentiality agreement. Right, so go on, what date? It is the 27th. You don't want me to read all that, do yeah. you? That's just saying I'm not going to squeal about anything I've seen. I'll throw on there all day, won't I? Just, yeah. Go on. All right. Perfect. Want to do it again? Yeah, I'd love to do it again. Love to do it again. Loved it. Thank you.